17th century English philosopher John Locke is to be remembered for his wise and brilliant contributions to three great issues that continue to concern us to this day. How we should educate our children, who should rule over us, and what we should do with our people who have different religious ideas. John Locke was an English philosopher and physician known as the father of liberalism. Born in Somerset, England in 1632, he attended Westminster School and then went to Oxford University in 1652. Whilst at Oxford, Locke grew disillusioned at the curriculum of the college, as the emphasis of study was on classical philosophy rather than the works of more modern philosophers. He continued studying, however, and obtained his master's degree in 1658, and was elected a member of the Royal Society in 1668. He graduated with a Bachelor of Medicine degree in 1674. He began practicing medicine, and became a member of the Earl of Shaftesbury's household, and assisted him in his business and political issues, and then became secretary to the Board of Trade until 1675. After some prompting by the Earl, Locke began writing and composed his famous and controversial work Two Treatises of Government, which was an argument against the monarchy and political legitimacy. He was then forced to flee to the Netherlands and returned after a five-year exile. He then published his works An Essay Concerning Human Understanding and A Letter Concerning Toleration on his return. His works discuss the concepts of identity and the self, as well as consciousness and knowledge. He is considered the first of the British empiricists, a theory that all knowledge comes from experience. He is known as one of the finest Enlightenment thinkers, which prompted intellectual discussion and opposed the intolerance of the church and the state, and influenced modern liberalism. He died in 1704 and is buried in Essex, England. John Locke was hugely influential English philosopher of the 17th century whose ideas, particularly in the realm of political philosophy, are still hugely relevant today. Born in 1632, Locke is an important figure of the early European Enlightenment, and certainly many of his ideas had a considerable influence on later major Enlightenment and thinkers such as Immanuel Kant, David Hume, and Jean Jacques Rousseau. Since he was a polymath, who wrote and thought on an extremely broad range of interests, this talk will focus on his contributions in three main areas, epistemology, political philosophy, and religious toleration. The epistemology one modern idea of the theory is mostly attributed to John Locke's empirical epistemology of the late 17th century. Though Locke himself used the expression of white paper instead in his essay on human understanding, tabula rasa only appears in the original French translation of the work. In John Locke's philosophy, tabula rasa was the theory that the human mind is at birth a blank slate without rules for processing data, and that data is added and rules for processing are formed solely by one's sensory experiences. The notion is central to Lockean empiricism. As understood by Locke, tabula rasa meant that the mind of the individual was born blank, and it also emphasized the individual's freedom to author his or her own soul. As he argues no man's knowledge here can go beyond his experience. Political philosophy. Locke's two treatises of government were published in 1689. It was originally thought that they were intended to defend the glorious revolution and William's seizure of the throne. We now know, however, that they were in fact composed much earlier. Nonetheless, they do lay out a view of government amenable to many of William's supporter. First Treatise Part of Locke's strategy in this work was to offer a different account of the origins of government. While Filmer had suggested that humans had always been subject to political power, Locke argues for the opposite. According to him, humans were initially in a state of nature. The state of nature was apolitical in the sense that there were no governments and each individual retained all of his or her natural rights. People possessed these natural rights, including the right to attempt to preserve one's life, to seize unclaimed valuables, and so forth, because they were given by God to all of his people. Second Treatise Locke was aware of this and devoted a great deal of thought to the nature of property and the proper distribution of property within a commonwealth. His writings on economics, monetary policy, charity, and social welfare systems are evidence of this. But Locke's views on property inside of a commonwealth have received far less attention than his views on the original acquisition of property in the state of nature, third treatise. In such conditions government arises since individuals see the benefits which can be gained by relinquishing a number of their right to a central authority this takes place in the form of contract the impact of Locke's political thought, and his fundamental belief in the right to life. Liberty and property can be seen very clearly in the United States Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution around a century later Locke also advocated environmental separation of powers and believed that revolution is not only a right but an obligation in some circumstances. 
He is often known as the father of classical liberalism, with a quotation such as the following supporting this notion. The end of law is not to abolish or restrain, but to preserve and enlarge freedom, 